everyone and happy, happy Sunday. I'm happy to hear everyone had such a good time last night while we were here in the cold, very cold over here in America. But God bless you all. I'm sure you guys had a good time and stay safe. So today's topic as requested is going to be on MRSA. Some of you are like, what is that? So MRSA stands for Methicillin Resistant Staphylococcus Aureus. And they're like, oh my God, that's a lot of words. So let me go into that a little bit. So what is MRSA? MRSA, as I just stated, stands for Methicillin Resistant Staphylococcus Aureus. It is a type of bacteria that, that is resistant to common antibiotics, including methicillin. Some people call MRSA a superbug. And this is what it looks like on the face and on someone's arm. So what are some of the symptoms of MRSA? It is not normal for healthy people to have staph on their skin. Many of us do though, however. So some signs and symptoms involve redness, it's being swollen and painful area on the um, skin, skin rash or infection that looks like a spider bite or pimples. Pus or other fluids may drain from this area also. It may look like a boil. These symptoms are more likely to occur if the skin has been cut or rubbed because this gives MRSA germ a way to enter your body. Symptoms are also more likely, likely in areas where there is, there's more body hair because the germ can get into hair follicles. MRSA infection in people who are in healthcare facilities tends to be severe. These infections may be in the bloodstream, the heart, the lungs, or other organs, urine, or in the area of a recent surgery. Some symptoms of these severe infections may include chest pain, cough, or shortness of breath, fatigue, fever and chills, general ill feeling, headache, rash, wounds that do not heal. So who is at risk for MRSA? MRSA infection affects all ages and genders. Animals can carry MRSA, although they often get it from people. Intravenous drug users who shear needles are 16 times more likely to get MRSA infection. Certain workers and members of the community are more at risk from MRSA infection. These include athletes, healthcare professionals, members of the military, prison inmates, students and employees at schools and childcare centers, veterans, farm workers, and livestock workers. Now, there are two categories of MRSA. One is called the community acquired and one is called hospital acquired. So community acquired means that you've caught it in the, in the community and hospital acquired necessarily or, or, uh, means that you caught it in the hospital. So preventing community acquired MRSA. You wanna make sure that you're washing your hands. You wanna careful wash, washing hands remains the best defense against germs. So you wanna scrub your hands briskly for at least 20 seconds or the song, happy birthday. You wanna also make sure that you carry small bottles of hand sanitizers containing at least 60% of alcohol for times when you don't have access to soap and water. You wanna keep any wounds that you have covered. Keep personal items personal. So you wanna avoid sharing certain things. Shower after athletic games or practices. So you wanna shower immediately after a game, use soap and water, don't share towels, check that the shared shower facilities is clean. And if it's not clean, shower at home. It's okay for you to go home sweaty. Sanitize your linens. If you have a cut or sore, wash towels and bed linens in a washing machine set to the hottest water setting with added bleach if possible and dry them in hot dryer. Wash gym and athletic clothing after each wearing so you can get rid of the bacteria. So preventing now hospital acquired infections. In the hospital, people who are infected or, or colonized with, of, or, with often are placed in isolation as a measure to prevent the spread. Visitors and healthcare workers caring for people in isolation may need to wear protective garments. They also must follow strict hand hygiene procedures. For example, healthcare workers can help prevent hospital wide MRSA by washing their hands with soap and water or using hand sanitizers before and after each clinical appointment. So before they go in the room and after they come out of the patient's room, they want to wash hands as well. Hospital room surfaces and equipments, as well as laundry items, need to be properly disinfected and cleaned regularly. And I want to reinforce in, in this area. So sometimes people go to visit their loved ones and they see these isolations, right? And then they don't want to follow the protocols because this is my loved one. But it's important that you follow 
isolation precautions that are being listed in the hospital setting. And that's also some of the reasons why we don't allow babies in the hospital, because then you're, you're going to expose them to infections and bacteria like this, and this can be deadly for them as well. So exams and tests. The only way to know for sure if you have MRSA or a staph infection is to see a provider. A cotton swab is used to collect a sample from an open skin rash or skin sore, or a sample of blood, urine, sputum, or pus from an abscess may be collected. The sample is then sent off, of course, and get tested. And then the doctor will decide what's best to treat the infection. So how does it spread? I think you can get that information based on everything that I've said so far. You can get colonized or Mercer through direct contact with an infected person or animal. Mercer can survive on surfaces for hours, sometimes weeks. You can pick up the bacteria by touching or sharing contaminated items. Bed sheets, clothes, medical equipment, sports equipment, towels, utensils, and more. So is MRSA contagious? MRSA is contagious, yes. Like all other staph bacteria, it can spread when someone touches or contaminates surface from person to person, especially in places where large groups of people are close together, like schools, camps, or college dorms. Often this happens when people with skin infections share personal things like razors, bed linens, towels, or clothing from one area of their body to another by dirty hands or fingernails. Sometimes people can be carriers of MRSA. So you can be a carrier and don't even know that you have MRSA. This means the bacteria stay on or in their bodies for days, weeks, or even years without causing any symptoms, but they can spread it to others. That's why washing hands well and often is always important. So what are the treatments? Draining the infection may be the only treatment needed for the skin MRSA infection that has not spread. A provider should do this procedure, so please don't try to do this by yourself. Do not try to pop open or drain the infection yourself. Keep any sore or wounds covered with a clean bandage. Severe MRSA infections are becoming harder to, to treat. Your provider will follow guidelines about which antibiotics to use and will look at your personal health history. MRSA infections are harder to treat if they occur in the lungs or blood, people who are already ill or who have a weak immune system. You may need to keep taking antibiotics for a long time, even after you leave the hospital. Be sure to follow the instructions on how to carefully take them when you get home. Of note, many people carry MRSA bacteria in their skin or noses and varying periods of time and never know it. This is not a problem. MRSA can spread in hospitals, other healthcare facilities, and in the community where you live, work, or go to school. MRSA infections can occur in various sites and may be serious, even life-threatening, if it's not treated. So if you start having any symptoms, you want to make sure that you follow up with your provider and get worked out, all right? So different forms of MRSA infections can also include bone infections, osteomyelitis, joint infections, heart infections, pneumonia. Milder infections can be treated with oral antibiotics. More severe infections require intravenous treatment. It is very important to take all the antibiotics exactly as your healthcare provider prescribes. So you don't stop it because you're feeling better or you don't have any more symptoms. You complete your treatment, and that includes any medication treatment that has been given to you. Many people who carry MRSA never get sick. The bacterium remains within the skin or mucosa where it has established colonization. Problems arise when MRSA on the skin surface in a colonized person enters the skin through a wound or other opening and invades deeper structures. I want to give special acknowledgement to Penn Medicine, to the Mayo Clinic, to the Centers for Disease Control, as well as the Cleveland Clinic for the information that I provided to you today. I hope it was not too complicated or too confusing, but trust and believe all of us have a little bit of MRSA somewhere and we just don't know. It's just not surfacing yet and we're not showing any symptoms. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service and know that God is a keeper and he will keep you safe. Enjoy. <laughs>